Hello everyone! Last year when COVID started, we saw an increased demand for things that count people, so-called people counters. So today we're taking a closer look at how these things actually work and what to consider when you're using them. Okay, let's go. So how do people counters actually work? You know, people counters are used for a bunch of things. And last year when COVID started, so many businesses suddenly need to know how many people are going into their facilities. So how many people are inside, how many people go inside, how many people go outside, how many people are in certain areas for obvious reasons, because you had all these restrictions um, that you need to make sure how many people are in an area and people counters are used to calculate this so-called occupancy. So based on how many people go in, how many people go out, you would know if the right amount of people is in there and you could, for example, turn on the red light if people are not supposed to go in a shop anymore. And there are tons of other examples because the area of so-called spatial analytics is exploding. Every All the businesses, they need to know how the facilities are being used, how their workplace is being used for operational efficiency, for increasing efficiency of meeting rooms and workplaces and so on. So there is an increasing demand for so-called people counters. And today we're taking a closer look at how those things actually work. Now, the first thing to notice is there are tons of different technologies. Uh, you can use weight sensors, for example, you can use uh, light barriers, you can use um, tracking MAC addresses of phones, um, but we're not covering those, we're covering more the optical sensor side of it, just to, uh, to have a little bit of focus. And, um, and to, to cover this, let's start off with what different types there are. So take a look over here. Um, these are the fo four main types of sensors for people counting. First, we have the classical camera um, that has the great advantage that you can, it's not a special device, you can buy it anywhere you're, where you're buying cameras. And you might even have one at the place where you do want to do people counting. So it's multi-purpose, it's easy to procure, it's easy to maintain, so all, this, uh, all these advantages. However, it also has a, a few disadvantages when it comes to counting and accuracy. Then we have LiDAR over here. Um, that has the great advantage of being more accurate because LiDAR is laser essentially and it delivers you height information so you know how many how far the pixels are away. And this way you can distinguish between adults and children and dogs, for example. So it's more accurate this way. The disadvantage is that you have a special device that you need to buy, that you need to install, that you need to maintain. And usually it's a di different provider than your usual camera provider. So maybe a little bit more effort in installation, also a little bit more cost. Then we have thermal over here. This used to be popular for some years. It's a little bit going back now. But the idea is that you use thermal cameras in order to have an easier time distinguishing between people and not people because you only read the heat signatures and this way uh, you ignore everything else like shopping carts, for example, but you won't know the distance to the object. So you won't know if it's a dog or if it's a child or if it's an adult. And finally, we have stereo cameras. They're also quite popular. Essentially, those are two regular cameras just in one housing. And since you have two images, you can calculate the distance to the sensor because it's like the human eye, it can calculate the distance. So definitely an advantage is that it's, uh, it's more accurate because you have the distance information, but a disadvantage again, it's a special device that you have to install and to maintain and really you cannot use it for anything else than people counting. So those are the types of sensors. Um, with all of them, once you have the sensor, when you have, once you have the sensor input, you have to process it. So you have to do the actual video analytics. And I covered this in a different uh, different video before, how video analytics work under the hood. But just as a reminder, it's essentially three steps. And those three steps are detection, tracking, and reasoning. So detection, actually detecting that there is an object, tracking the object from one frame to the other, so following the object, and then reasoning to make sense of this information. In this case of people counting, it's to draw a line and to make one count up when an object crosses the line. So that's the reasoning part. Three steps, detection, tracking, reasoning. So let's go through it based on people counting. Let's start with detection. So with detection, detection, you need to find out where an object is in the image. 
And the traditional approach is with something called background subtraction. Background subtraction essentially has a template of how the background should look like. And you're taking this template and subtract it from the current image. And the output, what you get there is what we see here is we get all the pixels that do not look like the template. So, so, so called foreground pixels. And this way you find your object, you do your detection. But this has a bunch of disadvantages. Um, one of them being highlights in the image and also shadows because anything that is a shadow and that wasn't there before in your template image will appear as an object. And obviously that is not good for accurate results. Actually, I took this example here from my uh, master thesis that I did back in Slovenia. And this was about shadow detection. I mean, this is now 10 to 15 years ago, so quite some time. Um, but you see the result here. The, the, the white pixels are foreground pixels. And these gray pixels here are the ones that are detected as shadow. As you can see here, that's below the car is shadow. There are also some wrong detections here. It detects uh, the front of the car as shadows as well, probably because it's uh, it's black here. And it also shows the limitations. So it's pretty hard to, with this approach to figure out what is actually a true, um, a true object and what is not a true object. And to give an example of an actual application with people counting, this is a people counting application with this approach, with background subtraction. You can already see all these red areas are shadows that are being detected. All the, sh all the circles are objects that are detected. And you just saw here that it's get getting pretty chaotic. Here, yeah, you have a bunch of circles. It's pretty much random because this is pretty hard. You have lots of shadows, um, lots of different detections. And um, it's, yeah, it's pretty hard to configure something that, that counts fairly accurately. So this is the reason why for a few years, uh, approaches have shifted to a classical machine learning approach, so deep learning, where we're not doing background subtraction, but we're detecting actual people based on a neural network that we that we use. So let's take a look at the same scene here, just using a neural network. So this is the same scene. Uh, you won't see these circles because they are deactivated, but you will see it counts when this uh, line flashes. Uh, and it counts up here as well. But uh, the point is that the neural network ignores all the shadows, ignores all the disturbances and actually only counts people. And this enables you in such a difficult scenario to still count very accurately uh, because it's really just trained to detect people and ignores everything else. So I would say this is the state of the art modern approach, how you do detection for people counting. Um, and there is still, the approach that you use top-down cameras like here, so cameras that look from straight top down. But this approach also allows you to take cameras that are at tilted angle, um, that, um, that are regular camera views, for example. All right, so uh, this is the detection part. So let's move over to tracking. As I mentioned, tracking is to find the same object in different video frames. So in, essentially to, to follow the, the object through the scene, through the video. And for people counting, that looks like this. Here we have a typical CCTV example where it's not a top-down camera. And we have people where their, uh, their heads are being detected. So we have a neural network here that is specifically trained to detect the heads of people, which is very nice for this tilted camera views because occlusions don't matter so much. And as you can see, we track the object through the scene. If they stay the same color, the system knows that it's the same object. So this works here. This guy stays all blue. And, um, and this way we can do the reasoning. And that's the next step. The reasoning happens when actually the people cross the line and we count one up. So we know, okay, there was a person, the person crossed the line. So this was an actual people count. And this is the next step, the final step, the reasoning. One final advice, um, reasoning is not the whole story because reasoning actually delivers you the counting result. But especially with people counters, it's important to look at the next step as well. And that's how do you present the data to the user? Because it's one thing to have, have the data, but how do you make this data usable? And one way, obviously, for people counting is dashboard. So when you have a people counting application, make sure you're not only thinking about the sensor side and, how to, and which sensor to choose and, and how the counting actually works, but also how do you leverage the data afterwards? Do you have a a system that already provides a dashboard? Do you have a way of exporting the data? 
to uh, to an external system where you could use Power BI, for example, to or, or Tableau or something else or something else uh, to visualize the data. Um, anyway, so this is important. Either you have a dashboard or you have a way to extract the data and present it to the dashboard because in the end, that's only what matters for users. So that's it. That's, uh, that's how people count us work. A little bit under the hood and a very quick, uh, quick overview. We will cover some other applications later on, but for today, that's it. So thank you for joining once again. Please subscribe. Don't forget to subscribe. That's very important to us. And otherwise, see you next time.